Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about the inspector, and in particular, the inspector for shapes. So we're going to be modifying shapes using the inspector. Now, what is the inspector? It's the area over here on the right of sketch, and like you've seen, whenever you select anything, whether it's an artboard or a rectangle itself, uh, this inspector is going to show different things. So let's go ahead and create a shape. We're just gonna do a basic rectangle inside of this artboard. And one thing you'll notice is that the default properties for this shape are that it's going to have this gray fill and it's going to have a darker gray border. Now, like I said, when the shape's not selected, this information pertains to nothing because nothing's selected. We select the shape and we get its position in X and Y coordinates, its size uh, with height and width, it's rotational. Uh, we can flip it if we'd like. We can give it a radius and round those corners. Uh, we can basically give it a shared style that's sort of like almost like if we would be working with CSS, maybe we create a style that we're gonna be using over and over again and then we can save it and then reuse it. Uh, we also have blending styles, like what you'd expect uh, with Photoshop when you have blending, we have normal, dark, and multiply, color burn, the stuff that you're going to be used to. Now, we also have an opacity where you can make this transparent. And next we have fills and borders. Below that, we have some options like shadows, inner shadows, Gaussian blur, and reflection. Now, what's cool about things like fills and borders is that we have some options here. It's not just change the amount of fill, give it a blending style or an opacity. We can actually add multiple fills. First, let's actually get rid of this border. We can just do that by unchecking this checkbox. There we go, we now have a borderless rectangle. And let's change this fill color by clicking on the color here. And within here, you can see that we have options to all sorts of different fills. So fills are not just the color, it's also gradients, it's radial gradients, it's angular gradients, it's patterns, and it's noise. Now we can change. Now each of these are going to have different types of properties. Uh, we can go over some of these in later videos, but you can see that you can provide fills of all different types, and individually we have ways of controlling that. We also have a quick color palette here where you can add colors or select them via hex, RGB, or uh, just this color picker here. Cool, so what can else can we do with this? Let's say we wanted a flat red, but we also wanted a layer of noise that we wanted to multiply. So we can have this fill red, and then we can click the plus right here, and this is going to add another layer. You'll notice it's adding a gradient by default on top of this that is uh, set to the color up top here, having some transparency, but let's add some noise on top of this. So we did that here, and let's just say we're gonna have uh, original is fine. And let's tone down the intensity a little bit. Now, we have this layer on top. Now, you'll notice that when I, mod when I move this intensity, it's actually just changing the opacity of this layer. Uh, so we can leave that here. Let's tell this to, however, multiply with the layer below it. We can go ahead and say, multiply, and that's not a huge difference. We can have it darken. We can do any of the things that you normally expect. Here's an overlay, and now let's dial back the intensity a little bit. There we go. So now we have uh, some noise here on this layer. Let's say we hated that noise, we wanna get rid of it. Uh, we actually decided we don't want two fills. We can just right click on that and select remove. We now just have one fill. And likewise, with borders, we can say, Let's have a border that's five pixels thick and it's like black. And now let's say we wanna click plus, we can add another border. Now keep in mind here that borders can also have linear gradients, radial gradients, or angular gradients. Now I'm gonna keep this as just a basic example here. So let's do this something super ugly and have a blue here. Now let's go ahead and bump this size of it up 
and we can watch it grow. Now, it is covering our previous border. Now that's because the position was sent to center. We can change this to be inside or outside and you can see that it's now on the outside of our other border and our shape. So just like that, we have a double border and we can keep adding borders. And you can click this gear, gear here to give dashes or gaps, or you can give your borders rounded edges or chopped edges, that sort of thing. So we have some options with borders even on top of that. Now you can even add a shadow nice and easy and this is sort of what you'd be familiar with if you were using CSS. We have an X, a Y, a blur, and a spread and we have a, a color picker here. Nothing crazy, we don't need anything extra than that and you can always click the plus and add more shadows. Likewise, we have inner shadow, which functions the same way, and we have some blur effects. We can use Gaussian, motion, zoom, or background blur. And to enable those, you just need to click this checkbox. Notice how these are all non-destructive. You can click and unclick, and it turns them off or on, just like Photoshop layer styles. We can also do a reflection if you'd like. You can see this reflection down here, and we can turn up the strength and the, the distance and stuff like that. Now see, these are the visual flares for the inspector, but a lot of the times uh, this position and size comes in handy. Let's say we wanted this to be exactly 650 and this one to be 350 tall. Now it's exactly perfect and we wanted this to be, uh, let's say we want it to be 200 pixels from the left of our artboard. All we have to say is 200 and we wanted this to be 100 pixels from the top of our artboard, we just say 100. So these position values are relative to the artboard itself. This size is the size of the shape and we can rotate it like so. Cool, so we now have the ability to transform our shapes into all sorts of cool stuff using all these different styles. And there's even more than that. Like I said, we could set up a shared style. And of course, we're gonna go over things like that in the future about how we can make our workflow better and how we can create some really cool stuff using Sketch. Of course, this shape is super ugly and I apologize for that. Uh, and I promise in the next videos, we're actually making things that look nice. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook or anywhere. We love to hear from you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.